If you love the beach, I've got six high-end crafts for you. Keep watching. Today I'm going to show you two beach themed projects. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. So for project number one, we're going to start off with this little picture from Dollar Tree. This is a thrifted frame. And then I have some of these little wooden embellishments and two different kinds of rope to choose from. So I'm just getting an idea here of which ones I want to use and out of those two packages I've chosen some shells and some turtles. Now we're going to move over to the little canvas art. I'm using my little trimmer here, rotary trimmer that came from Dollar Tree and I'm going to just cut through that canvas and remove it from the frame. I'm using some pliers to just remove the staples. I'm not going to make it too neat on the back, just clean it up a little bit because you won't be able to see this once it's down. Now we're going to reverse this so you can see how this will look. But first we're going to paint this. So I'm going to protect my surface here. That's just a cutting mat from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use some of this neutral gray paint to cover over this brown frame. I'm just using a sponge brush, but you can use whatever you have. I don't want to put it on too thickly because I want it to dry quickly so I can move on with my project. We're going to do all of the front and the sides and the inside area here. So in order to make everything cohesive, I'm also going to be applying some of that gray paint over these brown wooden pieces. I'm not gonna put on a heavy coat here either. I just want this to look like it's kind of weathered, kind of washed like the frame, that larger frame that is off to the left there. It's gonna be kind of streaky, kind of weathered and worn, and that's kind of the idea with a coastal or beachy looking thing. I know this is not everyone's cup of tea, but I happen to live very close to the coast in Southern Alabama. So a lot of people from down here are still into the coastal thing. All right, I'm gonna take the back off and I'm going to cover it with some of this light, it's like a cream colored, like a really light, pretty cream colored burlap that I got from um, Goodwill. And I'm just gonna trim it down to fit over that backing. And I did have some protective surface under there so I wouldn't cut my table. And this is very easy to put down with just a little bit of hot glue. Protect your fingers because it will go right through this loose weave. I'm gonna go all the way around here and do the same thing. Gonna get my corners folded under so that it makes a nice neat corner. Be sure you try to line this up so that you're, anytime you're using burlap over another surface so that you don't have a bunch of crooked lines that it may drive some of you crazy. It would definitely drive me crazy. Then you can just trim up the back, make it look a little neater if you want to. But I won't need it because I'm going to show you another way to cover all that up in a little bit. So we're just going to secure those back down and that's going to be our backing. Now we're just going to dry brush a little bit of white chalk paint over the top. If you look closely, you can see that you can still see the brown underneath. You can see the gray, and then you'll see this streaky white on here. It's a pretty look. And I think it looks very much like the bigger frame that we have in the background. You can make this as light or as dark as you want to. The idea is to be able to have everything sort of matching. Not perfectly, but you know, blending well together. Now we're going to do the same thing here with the frame. We're going to take a little bit of that paint on that Dollar Tree brush 
bounce a little bit of it out of there and then just start working around that frame. I'm going to get the insides and all of the sides. I'm going to do the same thing here. I did put a little bit too much in some spots, but after it dried, I sanded it down a bit. I'm not sure why it did that, if it's just the type of material this is made out of or what, but it's easy enough to fix. It's just a little paint. You can go back over it with paint, or after it's dry, you can use a sanding block like I did and just lightly go over it and it will blend it down. It, that's just so much better. Isn't that better? Yeah. All right. So I think everybody has seen this done and probably done it themselves, but just for those of you who don't know how, we're going to just take some hot glue, go around that frame, and lay it on top of the canvas. Kind of center it where you have things nice and squared up. And then you're going to trim down all of the excess. You can go back over. If you don't get close to it, it's not a big deal. You can use an X-Acto knife or any equivalent of that or some scissors and trim it down. Then I'm going to place it down on top of the burlap. You can do that with some hot glue. I did that on the bottom as well. You can go across, you know, wherever you want to, but you gotta be careful with that canvas. If you put a bunch of glue underneath that, you're probably going to see it through there. So just stick to the area where the wood is touching the canvas. Now I'm going to use my embellishments here and there on the frame. I've chosen two different shells and a little turtle. And see how nicely all of that looks? It looks pretty close, doesn't it? Now I'm just gonna use a little, I have a little tile here that I got from Goodwill in a big bag. I've got a bunch of these. I'm going to put that down and it's going to act as a little riser for my turtle so that he stands off a little bit and it gives him a little bit of dimension. He's going out to sea. Yeah, I had a little music going so I was dancing. Now I'm going to take this lighter color rope. I decided that that looked a little bit better with the background, that cream colored background. And I'm just going to trim out the frame with this. Looks like nautical rope to me, so I think it'll work well. All right, the end that is finished, I'm going to place down in the bottom corner and then just run some glue right along there. And then all the way around the corners and the sides until you get back to your starting point. I love these challenges that Heidi puts out. It's such a great opportunity to get to meet other people and to check out other people's channels. And I really appreciate the opportunity and all the work that goes into it on Heidi's behalf for all of us who are trying to grow our channel. Okay, so there we go. To the bottom. Just pressing it down and toward the frame so there's no gaps and it's nice and neat. And then I'm just going to trim up the edge so it looks again nice and neat. And then we're going to need something to hang it with. And rather than just putting a hanger on the back, I like the look of this chunky rope. So we're going to use this as a hanger. And we're gonna do a little magic in a moment that's gonna make this look like it is going through the frame. To take some of the bulk out and to make it a little bit thinner so the back is closer to the surface that we hang it from, I've just unwound it, the rope just a tad. This is a very soft, cotton-like material. I'm gonna press it down, then add a little more glue on top and a little scrap of paper to hold it in place. Same thing on this side, and then you can just take your scissors and cut off whatever is left underneath your little paper. Simple enough. All right. 
Now here is where the magic happens. We're gonna take that same rope and tie a little knot with a little, make sure that you have some end hanging out there. And we're gonna do the same thing. Um, cut off that end right there so that you have the about the same length on both sides. And then kind of take that rope apart on the end so that it looks frayed. And then you're just gonna glue that knot right there on the frame so that it looks like that other rope has went right through the frame. Is that not the coolest idea? You're gonna do the same thing for the other side, trim it off. I'm using these, they're called bull nose pliers, but they're used to pull nails and do all kinds of cool things. I love them, they're just such a good tool. And they cut, they cut really well through thicker things, so I like to use it for wire and thick rope and that sort of thing. And I'm just gonna do that in an approximation to where the rope would be coming out if we drilled a hole. And just fluff out those ends, and look at that. Isn't that cute? It looks like it is tied through the frame. Okay, so now we need to cover up the back. So you can use a scrap of whatever you have. This happens to be a piece of backing from some paper. I think that my kids had some crafting paper. And you're just going to glue that down to the back and it's going to cover up all the hardware and be nice and neat for you. So that's project number one. What do you think? Be sure you stay tuned to the end because I'm going to show you what these look like outside. Follow me on my social media, guys. Love to see you there. Okay, for the next project, we're going to do a little wreath. I'm going to start off with this sign that I got from Dirt Cheap, but it originally came from the Dollar Spot or Target's Bullseye, whatever it's called. And I'm going to use a little bit of spackle that came from Dollar Tree and just a little stick, a little craft stick that I have here. And I'm going to fill in those holes. I have a 14, I think it's a 14 inch, it may be this, no, it's the smaller wreath that you can get at Dollar Tree. And I just wrapped it with some burlap fabric. I used my wreaths over and over again. That little turtle came from Goodwill. And then this ribbon here also came from Goodwill. I'm going to make a really simple little bow here, wrap it in the middle to secure it. I'm going to trim off my ends and then trim off this little piece because we don't need this for a tail. This is so, so very simple. I'm gonna put down some hot glue and put the bow on. And then kind of get an idea of where I wanna put this. Easy enough, a little hot glue, and press it down. Then I'm going to take my little turtle, which I've already used a little bit of antiquing wax on his back because that's a little piece of metal there. A little piece of galvanized metal. And I'm going to add a little bit of glue on his little feet, his little flippers, and place him down just at an angle. And then I'm going to go back in and just kind of blend that out a little bit more. This is a bow that was from a project that I did from my patriotic DIYs and I saved it of course and then I'm just gonna add that on there too I'm gonna take the little greenery pieces off of these thrifted flowers because they look to me like something that would be in the ocean like seaweed or kelp or something that would be found on the ocean floor so I'm gonna use these pieces cut them off and just tuck them around the bow and around my turtle and here and there around the wreath. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to give you a big welcome. I hope that you subscribe if you like my videos. If you're enjoying the video, I'd love it if you would give me a thumbs up. And at the end, I'm going to show you what these look like outside, so stay tuned. To 
This is so easy to do. I want it to look like it's under him and not blocking the sign. So I'm just tucking it underneath. Things will glue very easily to that burlap backing. That's one of the reasons I love to have it on my wreaths because it's so easy to work with and things just stick to it really well. All kinds of embellishments and ribbons. So when we leave the house, if we go to the beach or if we go out to the lake, I can put this up so everybody knows we're not home. Find me at the beach. So here we have it outside. This is outside on my house. We do live in a log cabin in Southern Alabama. And this is how it looks. And I would like your opinions if you like the first one or if you like the second one the best. And I would love to know in the comments if you're planning on doing either one of these or if you learned anything new from my video today. Here is the second one, our pretty little at the beach wreath. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that you'll come back and see me again. And I will see you again real soon. Bye. Today I have three high-end, late summer beach DIYs you've got to see. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. We're going to start off with some Dollar Tree rope, some starfish and seashells, some pipe cleaners, glue and glue gun. You're also going to need pliers. You're going to need a sign from Dollar Tree. I've chosen this one. This is a stake from a autumn piece last year from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use some thrifted mesh and thrifted burlap. These are some leftover pieces of ribbon from Dollar Tree. These are some thrifted crackled boat oars or paddles. Here's the shells I was talking about. Use your own collection or what you can get from Dollar Tree. Project number one is going to be a door hanger or a table swag. The original idea of this came from Keeping It Simple Crafts. You should go check out her channel. She's got lots of cool stuff. I'm going to start off by going about two inches down from the top and twisting pipe cleaners. One to the left, one to the right, just as you see. I'm going to go down another four to five inches and do one right in the middle pointing upward. Same process, go down four to five inches. I'm gonna wrap another one to the side, right underneath that, off to the other side. We're gonna continue this process all the way down. You can secure yours with some hot glue, and that is what you will see me doing for mine, so they don't slide up and down your stake. This wouldn't be an issue if you're going to use it on your table, but if you're going to hang it up, you don't want it to be pulled down. So we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I will be adding a ninth one later. So I'm going to take this burlapy mesh and I'm going to put it on my cutting board and take my rotary cutter and just slice up at 21 or 22 inches. You're going to do four of those, and we're going to do four of this other mesh with the little white dots on it. You can just put it aside. So we're gonna have four dots, four plain, and we're gonna start applying them down to our stake. But I'm gonna show you right here what we're going to do. You can roll it, you can make what some people call cruffles, where you curl it and you ruffle it. I'm gonna show you 
how I do it. So you either roll or fold over just a little. You can use a clamp to hold it down if you need the extra hand. Because it can be frustrating when it tries to come back at you if you're new at this sort of thing. Again, folding over a few times, and then we're going to take our fingers and walk right up the center of that. It's going to make a ruffle for you. So it's going to be two rolls with a ruffle in the middle. And you can take off your clamp. There you go. We're going to put it face down, right inside one of the side pieces on the top. I'm going to give it a few twists and then lay that back off to the side the way it was. Going on to the next one. Fold or curl it under. And then if you don't use anything to hold it in place, you can just do it with your fingers like this. It wants to cling to the other pieces. Hmm. Okay, so there you go. Roll that under, bring it together. There you go. Now you're going to place that one down on the other side. Facing downward, you're going to give it two or three good twists to hold it in place. We're going to take another one. Same process. I'm going to show you a few times so you can see exactly what we're doing. Walk it together, put it face down, right hand the one in the center. So on the top we have a plain and a dotted, then we have a plain one. Then we're going to put a dotted one on the other side, and then a plain one white right next to it. And by plain I mean the solid color. So there we go. Tightly twist it down. Once you get it all full, you can fluff it out just a little bit and see what's what. Here's our hanger at the top, so we know this is our top. I've decided to add one more piece down here on the bottom because we have room for it, so we're going to add one more, which will be our ninth piece. So go ahead and twist that on. Use a little bit of hot glue. Once your glue is dry, you can set the last piece of your cruffle or ruffle or whatever you want to call it right on top. Next we're going to start embellishing it and thickening it up just a bit. I'm going to take 8 inch pieces of this same brown mesh. I'm going to let it roll back onto itself and I'm going to use some of this beautiful turquoise or aqua colored or teal, whatever you want to call it, burlap. I'm going to roll it. It is shorter, that is not a problem. We're gonna put it right on top, kind of make an X, and then we're gonna place it down into our pipe cleaner. Same thing here. Be sure that the raw edge is on the inside. You can see me kind of manipulating a little bit to make sure that I don't have any rough edges sticking out. You can see there it is a little bit, but you just roll it back in, and there you go. We're gonna do this for every single one of those pipe cleaners all the way up until it is full. Don't you love that beautiful color? It's gorgeous. All right, so next we're going to take about 22 inches of this beautiful burlap, stretch it out, let it overlap about inch and a half, two inches in the center. Gonna pinch it, walk our fingers up like we did with the little ruffles that we did for the base. And here's your bow. Very simple, very, very easy bow. You can use whatever type you like, but I like the simplicity of this. It's very easy to make. And I can stick with my original materials. Tie it with your jute, and then start twisting around to give it a thicker center. This is also gonna secure those ends together so we didn't have to actually glue it together. I'm just tying this here, and there's our bow. Fluff it out a little bit. I've added tails to mine with a uh, just a tie there. If you want to leave long tails, you can do it like this and then pull some pieces off to make it look rough on the edges, or you can do like I did and trim it down. I'm going to take these 12 inch 
pieces of scraps, cut them into six inches. Then I'm going to fold them over and dovetail those. This is Dollar Tree wired ribbon. So we're going to need nine pieces because we have nine sections of pipe cleaner. We're going to go down into the bottom. Start there so I don't miss anything going upward. And just go up the entire length of the door hanger. And fluff it out a little bit. That wire helps it stay in place and this is what it's going to look like. You can go ahead and cut down your pipe cleaners that are left over if you want, or you can tuck them to the back. Now I'm taking these boat paddles, or these oars, and I'm just going to see where I like them, and then glue them down. You can use arrows from the Dollar Tree in the crafter section, and you can maybe write something on it, or put stickers on it. You can say, this way to the beach, or follow me to the sand. Anything like that that you want to do. You don't have to do it exactly like me. This is for inspiration. This is to get the ideas flowing for you. Then I'm going to start adding in my starfish. I decided since I only had a couple of these white ones, I would add them to the top and bottom. So right over the bow and then right in the center of the bottom. And I'm going to start adding in the orange. I think the orange looks beautiful with the rest of the colors in here. And I'll save the other starfish for another project. So when you're doing a project like this and you don't feel like it's laying flat where the glue can actually catch on to something to hold it sturd sturdy in place, just take like a pencil or a paintbrush, press it up on there and give it a second to dry. And then it's gonna stay. Okay, so here are some thrifted beads. They came off of a strand of, I think, Mardi Gras necklace. I think that's what it was. You can cut that down. You can also use pearls from the Dollar Tree. I'm just adding them here and there. I mean, after all, pearls are fitting with an ocean theme, correct? Because they are actually made in the ocean. There's no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting them. Just here and there. Looking at my project from all sides to make sure that it's exactly balanced and pleasing to my eye. And this is what we have. What do you think? Give me a thumbs up if you like this project. And if you're going to try it, I'd love to hear what colors you would choose for yours. Project number two. Salt in the air. Sand in my hair. I think is what this sign says. You're going to need a Dollar Tree sign. And I've chosen this one because I love the ocean. By the way, guys, pay attention. Ocean is our secret word. I won't say it again, so be sure that you know that. Write it down. Be listening in all the rest of the videos to the other girls for their secret words as well. I've decided that I want to use this brown rope because it matches my home. I have a very rustic home. I live in a log cabin by the lake. And I think this fits in a little bit better with the decor that I have going on. So we're just going to go right to the edge and put this rope down. I'm using my hot glue. Remember, Gorilla Glue is going to be your best friend on your outdoor projects because it isn't affected by the weather as much as the regular um, hot glue would be. It'll release in the heat and then your projects will fall apart. But Gorilla Glue has that something magic in it that just holds it right where it needs to be. By the way, this video is not sponsored. I'm just a very happy, proud user of Gorilla Glue. I'm clamping around the corners so that I don't lose my shape. This rope has a tendency to try to flex back out and I want it to stay on the corners. So adding the glue and a clamp until the glue is dry will hold that shape nice and crisp. Nice and crisp, there we go. Okay, so let's continue around here. So have you ever personally been to the beach or a beach? What color water have you seen? Because I've seen all kinds of water, all kinds. 
passing blue, turquoise, a muddy beach in the Gulf, um, kind of a greenish water. You'd be surprised. And not to mention, think of all the different sand at different places at different beaches. There's so many varieties of sand. Can you believe there's even black sand? Okay, so we're going to start on the top. The boat is cute, but we want to try something a little bit different here. I want to make a shell arrangement on the top. So I'm using some of my flatter, more light weight shells on the top in a variety of colors that I feel complement the sign. I'm going to get those glued down a little bit on the edge and on the sign as well. I want to use a variety of shapes to give some interest. I love these. They look like Norwal horns or unicorn horns. They're very pretty. They fit nicely up there on the top as a border, I think. So I'm going to start off with the bigger shells, and then I'm going to start adding down some more shells that are a little smaller. I took these special ones and put them on the bottom. There's yellow and pink and brown, and they all match the colors in the sign. fill in all of my little spots here and fill it out across the top. I want to thank Lini and Nadia for the opportunity to be in this scavenger hunt video. This has been a lot of fun. And I think it is going to be super fun for those of you who are watching because the opportunity to win $300 is just, uh, it's wonderful. It's definitely something I would be into. But I can't. I can't. But I can give you lots of good things to look at and lots of inspiration. So let that be my gift to you if you don't win. I'm going to add these beautiful blue ones that I saved from before right on the bottom. The yellow one's going to go on the top and it matches perfect. Plus I had a little extra rope that I put on the top for a hanger. Be sure to follow me on my social media. I have Pinterest and Instagram. Project number three. This is going to be just a little decoration to sit on your table, to sit on a shelf, to put in a vignette. You can put it in your yard even. I'm going to use some of these tiles. They look like they came from a swimming pool, maybe some bathroom projects that were left over. And I'm going to put them here. If you want to use something that's equivalent, since this is really just for inspiration, you can use some of that glass, the tumbled glass that comes from Dollar Tree. You can get it in a bag, and it's over there where the, well, at my stores, where the shells are and the sand is. So you can go check that out and see if you can find some of that. That would be gorgeous in this project. But this is what I had, so this is what I'm going to use. The projects don't always go exactly as we see them in our head. But I want you to know things are always, almost always fixable. You can always go in a different direction. That's usually what happens in my projects too. I didn't even think about measuring this first or laying it out before. I just got all excited and started putting it down on my Dollar Tree frame. However, I was able to deal with my issue. It is not perfectly square at all. It does overlap onto the inside of the frame and it will be long on the bottom. But that is not an issue because the stand, when you put the stand out on the back, it stands away anyhow. See how it hangs over the edge? I thought, ooh, I can't cut this. What am I gonna do? Then I thought, well, you know, there is a stand back there. I can easily just stand this up and this will be the new edge of the picture. No one will even know because you can't see it. So that's what I did. I just kept on going. Kept on going with the flow. This is sort of a sort of a pattern, I think. And it reminds me of Miami, Florida. Have you ever been to Florida? Have you been to Mexico? I'm going to keep going all the way around this frame until it is done and then I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can embellish it. Guys, if you're still watching, would you please leave me a some type of a 
palm tree or a beach themed emoji in the comments. I would appreciate that very much. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you here in my YouTube family. We do lots of budget friendly DIYs and crafts. I'm always here to bring you inspiration. We do live videos. We're going to try to do that once a month. and That is a lot of fun. I'm always going to try to save you as much money and give you as many tips as I can in the time that we have together. So there we go. Now, what are we going to put on the inside? I have a blue starfish we could put. Some of these flat seashells will fit right into this clamp without breaking. So there's an option for you. Here's a third option. You can just overlap that clamp like it wasn't ever there and put a variety of different shells on here. Or you could use a piece of ribbon and a shell just like that. Yes, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put this, looks like a tiger or a giraffe or something, the print on here. Going to place that down on there, smush it till the glue comes through, add a little paper on the back to protect it and keep it in place. And you can't see it when it's on there. And we're going to clamp it right on. What do you think? Which of these projects was your favorite? And do you think that you'll be trying one of these projects? I'd love to see what you come up with. And if you do something that was inspired by this video, I would love for you to tag me on Instagram so I can see your version of it. Here it is, that hanger laying on the table so you can see how it looks as a runner. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Today we'll make a mermaid wreath. Keep watching! So I have this cute little summer wreath video for you today. We're going to start off with some picks from Dollar Tree. These are also some, well these particular ones did not come from Dollar Tree. They were thrifted, but you can get similar um, ornaments during Christmas time. This is some thrifted mesh and it's kind of a bluish green kind of duochrome color i have some of these little twist ties this wreath form came from dollar tree it's the 14 inch here's a round sign from dollar tree and here are those stickers i was telling you about i cut the top part off to fit it in my little drawer but this is what they look like and then these little the little ornaments were thrifted and the little balls came from some tables scattered from Dollar Tree a long time ago. And then this is mesh from Dollar Tree as well. I let my daughter pick the stickers for this, so this will be going in her room. All right, we're gonna start off by getting this wreath ready. I'm gonna take my two pieces of mesh and pinch them together. I wanna put the lightest one, which is the white, on top. You can use any variety of color depending on what you want but I think it's a pretty good rep representation of, you know, the ocean and maybe where a mermaid would live in the deep green blue water. So the reason I'm using these twist ties is just because I wanted to show you that you can pretty much use anything to do this. They are, it's, it's really like a long bread tie, but they're used for plants so that you can um, stake your plants up if you need to do that. But I thought I would go ahead and use it for this. They were thrifted and I had plenty of them, so here we go. Making the most of what we got. I'm going down 10 inches and pinching this up and then attaching it. Now between each of the little dividers that go down through all of the circles of that wreath, I am going to put four. So we started off on one of those divider pieces and then counted down another two and then the last one is the number four and it will be attached to that crossbar as well so you're going to do that for each one of those now i fast forward and i'm going all the way back around to where we started you can see that one roll of this dollar tree mesh just about makes it all the way around this wreath you could probably stretch it a little longer if you made nine inches uh, poofs instead or eight inch poofs instead, but you know, you make it work. And certainly mesh is forgiving. You can always fill it in later and you'll see that I did the same thing. 
So we're going to go all the way back to where we started from, put that down, and when I run out of the white, I'm just going to continue around just making those poofs with the bluish green color I have there. Didn't you see that I'm doing that there? Just I've run out of the white, so now I'm just going to do it with that blue like I told you. And it ends up only being like two or three loops that don't have white with it. I have a tape measure for those of you who are new. A tape measure that is down on my table. So I pull that mesh down to the bottom to kind of measure it out. That's what I'm doing when you see me fooling around there on the bottom. So the last one is going to be right on top of where we started. I'm just going to open that up push it down tight and twist it. You can always tuck those under if you don't need to use them anymore. Then I'm going to measure 8 inches. Go up. I'm going to skip one ring and go to the next ring. And I'm going to start there and do the same thing. It will be 4 on each of those. Go all the way around just like I've done here. attaching it down the exact same way. You could always prepare your wreath in advance and put your little pipe cleaners on there to get them ready, but I like to do things the hard way sometimes. Truth of the matter is, lots of times I don't know where I'm going when I start a project, so I just kind of pick the stuff up and start going. And that's what I did here. So now I'm gonna alternate pulling the white on top and then the white on bottom. You can see blue and white and blue and white all the way around the wreath. Be sure you follow me on my social media on Pinterest and Instagram. Okay, so that's what you see me doing here is just fluffing that out, pulling those poofs apart, and dividing up that white so it goes up and down and up and down around the edge of that wreath. It almost gives it the effect of being more than there actually is of that white. a trick of the eye I think okay so you can see there in the bottom that I have more blue than I have green tucking my edge under pushing it through the back and this is how the wreath is going to look I'm going to take the sticker off the back here and I'm going to start painting this round sign the other side I just sanded a little bit I'm going to use a variety of blues and blue greens that you would naturally see in the water or in the sea or in the ocean. So I'm just showing you a variety here. I think I end up using five different colors. I'm gonna start off with the darkest color because it's gonna be the deepest, it's gonna represent the deepest part of the ocean. So I've got my dark blue on the bottom. Realistically, it would be a lot more blue than that, a lot darker, blacker. But you know, this is whimsical, so we're working with what we got. So now I'm gonna do some blue-green. I'm gonna use the same brush and just kind of ombre it down, just kind of lightly blend it down into the next color. Then I'm gonna pick a shade that's a little bit lighter than that. Go right on top. Same thing, I'm not taking any paint off. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that paint down on there and blend it slightly down into the bottom two colors. And we're going to keep doing that with each of the different colors all the way up to the top. Don't worry about the hole in the sign that will be covered up. So it's looking like we're getting closer to the surface of the water, right up to the top. So the color is getting lighter as it gets closer to the sun. I had too much fun doing this. I did originally try to do something like this with spray paint and it was a big old fail. So I definitely recommend you use your acrylics or watercolors, whatever you have. The acrylic worked perfect on this board. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Oh, I even impress myself sometimes. Okay, so now I've got these glittery picks that I got in the springtime from Dollar Tree. They were with the Easter stuff and I thought these look like coral or something that would live in the ocean. So I'm going to cut each one of these off of these two different colored picks. There is a aqua color and a kind of a 
sandy gold looking color and it matches well with what we got do you see my little tray this little tray and this little broom is what I use to clean my table with all the glitter now I've got a bunch of shells you can get these from the Dollar Tree some of these I had and some of these I actually did get from the Dollar Tree they have a good variety you can get tiny shells you can get larger shells and then the colors are varied as well so I'm picking through this huge container that I have it's a big old almost like a cereal container that's plastic with a lid and looking at all the different colors and I'm kind of comparing it to what we have if you see the little mermaid in the corner she's the one we're going to use so I'm kind of looking at the colors and what will look good with that that one has a little barnacle on it okay so I'm missing a little bit of footage here but it's pretty simple I just added some stickers we're going to secure the back on with hot glue pipe cleaners and a little piece of paper and this will give us a way to attach it to the wreath I don't want to pull it too tight because I don't want it to squish down my wreath I want the wreath to still be full and this will look rather like it's floating on top just sitting on the top so I took one of the little friends the little turtle because that's what my daughter wanted and she chose this mermaid and my daughter does have blonde hair so that may be why she chose this one but they're all very cute and the little stars also came off the pick and I just randomly put those around the edges so I'm going to alternate these um, blue gold blue gold blue gold blue and then I'm just using a little piece of pipe cleaner you can use wood whatever wire or whatever you have to stick these together I'm just using this to kind of hold them in place you could probably use a little rubber band and then I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue as well this helps them stick to that fuzzy part and it's also going to help it stick to the back of this board and I'm just going to use one of my Dollar Tree clamps to hold this on don't clamp over your glue though just clamp over the stems going to do the same thing here and this is going to be at a diagonal up on this side don't worry about them being bunched up because you can move those around a little bit once they get dried I'm just going over here on the back and adding some glue and the same thing over here because I don't want the picks to come off when I start fooling around with them just wanted to put a little extra and you can see here I just used a scrap of paper to put it down and I did not glue over my clamp now once that's dry and the glue is cool you can take your clamps off and then you can move these around a little bit make them look as though they would in the ocean where they have a little bit of movement and they're nice and spread out and dispersed So again, I kind of go by feeling when I do my crafts. So I'm just putting things down and trying to get an idea of what I think looks good and what colors and sizes look right. I only had one of those, I think it's a purplish colored shell. I only had one, but it was very pretty. Then using those pieces of wispy things, as a backing I'm going to start putting down some shells and there we go I got a variety of colors there I've got a small one mixed in there with the larger ones and I'm going to do the same thing over here it's almost like mini shell arrangements on each side That one reminds me of the little, like from a Norwal, and the little sea turtle has one of those for whatever reason. She has one on her head, so I think it's fitting to put one on here. Then I'm just taking these little bitty shells and filling out here and there. Now I thought these ornaments, when I saw them, they look just like bubbles. They're iridescent and they look like bubbles, so I thought that was perfect. I'm putting those down. Just going to use three of them. I think I had six. 
and I'm going to use three. It's going to take a bit of glue to hold that down into that mesh and they're going to have a tendency to kind of push up from the mesh because it's kind of bouncy and flowy. Just hold it down if you need to until that glue sets up. Then I'll take these glittery ones. I'm going to turn them upside down because I don't want those to show. We don't want them to look like ornaments. We want them to look like bubbles. So we're just turning them around and pressing them down. The bigger ones I was able to remove those silver toppers, but these little ones were glued on, so I just left them. I left them there. Then the little foam table scatter, I'm going to start filling in with those as well. Just going to put them here and there. It's like clusters of bubbles. You can use a little bit of glue in between them to hold them together if you need to. And sometimes just putting it, gluing it to the one beside it and, the, and a little space underneath it will hold it the way you want it. I don't want these to fall off. And you have to be careful with hot glue and styrofoam at any rate. They don't always get along well. But I did use a high heat gun and it worked just fine. So there's also some of these blue ones and I think I got those from Dollar Tree too. Might not have. They may have actually came from Goodwill. But I'm sure they came from someplace like Hobby Lobby or Michaels or a craft store if they didn't come from Dollar Tree. I'm just kind of looking. I want it to be kind of balanced. I don't want too much going on in one direction. I want it to be kind of, you know, spaced out and even. But random too, if that makes any sense. Oh my goodness, this is so cute. I've had this idea in my head for months now, and I just did not get it together to, to do the project. For one thing, most of my content is farmhouse or rustic or very earthy and this is a little bit out of what people normally see from me or have seen from me for several months now so if this is something that you like please let me know I really enjoy doing it and I would be happy to put out more content like this if it's something that you're interested in but you just gotta let me know my daughter is also a big unicorn fan, so we could certainly do some kind of project with the unicorns or Norwals or something like that. Now these definitely came from the thrift store. I do not know where they originally came from. They are styrofoam underneath, but they are sequined on top. And there are a few that are like a sand color, and a few of these are a very pretty blue color. So I've just used those as just accents because I didn't have very many of them. I think maybe I had four. Now these are, these I actually found at the beach. They are like pieces of sand dollar maybe, broken sand dollar or broken pieces of shell. I like the irregularity and that they're white. So I went ahead and used those in the project too. No shellfish were injured in the creation of this project. Now for this one, it's a little bit bigger, so I'm going to put it underneath. I put the glue on the top of it, and I'm just holding it underneath until it sits up. There's no right or wrong. You just do it, do what feels right to you, and that's how I do it. So I'm going back in with some of these little tiny shells and putting them here or there. I've even la overlapped on some of the star stickers, and I've added some more stickers. And then here we go, this is our hanger. All right, what do you think about this little beauty? Isn't she the cutest? I got a new backdrop. What do you guys think about that? Looks like brick. I think it looks nice. And then here is the wreath. This is our little mermaid wreath. And she turned out very nicely, I think. Again, please let me know if this is something that you would like to see more of from me. Are you going to try to do this yourself? I certainly hope so. My daughter 
had a little film here. She put some shells down there and decorated. So I wanted to add that to the footage. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye! Thanks so much for watching. Click a box or circle below for more.